High in the Himalayas, nestled amidst the clouds, lived a hermit named Tenzin. He dedicated his life to meditation and prayer, seeking enlightenment. His days followed a strict routine. Before the sun peeked over the snow-capped peaks, Tenzin would rise. He would greet the day with chanting, the sound echoing through the valleys. His only companions were the eagles soaring above and the occasional snow leopard leaving fleeting footprints in the snow. His life was simple, his focus absolute, yet peace like a whisper in the wind can be elusive and easily disturbed. The mice, unaware of the turmoil they caused, grew bolder. One particularly audacious mouse even dared to venture into Tenzin's meditation hall. This sacred space, usually filled with the scent of incense and the resonance of mantras, was now tainted with the earthy odor of mice and the rustling of their tiny bodies. Tenzin, in the midst of his meditation, felt a surge of anger. How dare these creatures intrude upon his sanctuary, his path to enlightenment? His peace, so carefully cultivated, shattered into a thousand pieces. One day Dorgo, a young man from the village below, made his arduous way up the mountain path. Dorgo was Tenzin's only student, his link to the world he had left behind. Dorgo brought with him news and provisions, a breath of the outside world into Tenzin's secluded existence. But Tenzin, preoccupied with his own internal battle against the mice and his inability to maintain his serene focus, was distant and withdrawn. He barely registered Dorgo's arrival his mind lost in the labyrinth of his own frustration. Dorgo, disheartened by his master's uncharacteristic distance, soon took his leave. He descended the mountain path, his heart heavy with worry and confusion. The warmth he usually experienced from his time with Tenzin was absent, replaced by a coldness that chilled him to the bone. He couldn't understand the change in his mentor, the lack of interest in their shared moments. The man who was once a source of wisdom and guidance now seemed lost in his own world, a world where Dorgo was no longer welcome. Days turned into weeks, and the mice continued their playful havoc. Tenzin's frustration grew, and with it, his detachment from his surroundings. He neglected his daily rituals, the chants and prayers that were once the pillars of his existence. His focus remained on the mice, their every move a source of agitation. He set traps, he tried to block their entry, but the mice, adaptable and persistent, always found a way. One morning, Tenzin awoke to an unsettling silence. The usual rustling and scurrying that had become the soundtrack to his life were absent. He ventured outside, expecting to see the telltale signs of the mice, but there were none. The silence was absolute, unnerving in its finality. The mice, it seemed, had moved on, seeking a new haven for their mischief. And in their absence, Tenzin was left to confront the consequences of his obsession. A wave of guilt washed over Tenzin. He realized that his single-minded focus on the mice had blinded him to his duties, to the people who cared for him. He had allowed a minor irritation to dictate his actions, his emotions, and in doing so, he had pushed away the very person he cared for most. The simple act of ridding his home of pests had become a monumental task, consuming his thoughts and actions, isolating him from the world around him. Tenzin decided to seek out Dorgo. He knew he had been a poor teacher, a distant friend, and he longed to make amends. As he descended the mountain path, his heart was heavy with regret. Tenzin, with a humility he had not felt in years, confessed his failings. He spoke of the mice, of his struggle to maintain his focus, and of how he had allowed his frustration to overshadow everything else. Dorgo listened patiently, his initial surprise giving way to understanding. He had always admired Tenzin's dedication to his spiritual practice, his unwavering pursuit of enlightenment. But he also knew that even the most dedicated individuals could falter, could lose their way. Dorgo, ever resourceful, suggested a simple solution to Tenzin's dilemma. Master, he said, we have cats in the village, skilled hunters who would welcome the challenge of ridding your hermitage of mice. Tenzin was taken aback. The solution was so simple, so obvious, yet it had never occurred to him. <laughs> With the mice gone, peace returned to the hermitage. But it was a different kind of peace, 
a deeper tranquility born from understanding and acceptance. Tenzin, humbled by the experience, realized the importance of staying connected to the world, to the people who enriched his life. The mice, though long gone, had left an indelible mark on Tenzin's life. They had taught him the importance of balance, of recognizing the interconnectedness of all things. They had reminded him that even the smallest creatures could teach valuable lessons if one was open to receiving them. And they had shown him the transformative power of simple solutions, the importance of seeking help when needed, and the value of nurturing meaningful connections. Please like and subscribe for more.